This video is part of a project for the Element 14 community, the electronics and engineering community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com, link in the doobly-doo. So over the last few videos, we've established how to build an Arduino-based clock. First with the 16x2 character display, then adding in the real-time clock module. Now, because I want my clock to have a novel display, i.e. hexadecimal, uh, I need to convert from the 16x2 character display over to something like this alphanumeric 14-segment LED display. The problem is, it requires 18 pins just to fire two LEDs, and I just don't have that many pins available on the Arduino, especially since I have to have six of these, well, three of these guys. Uh, for six digits. So in order to get this working, we're gonna have to use a separate LED driver. <music> Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and if you enjoy messing around with the Arduino platform, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon, blah, 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 blah. And as they said on the Impossibles, rally ho! Okay, let's take a look at the parts we're gonna need for this little project. Of course, we have our Arduino and our breadboard and our programming lappy. We've got three of these dual 14 segment displays that I'm gonna use eventually, a selection of jumper wires and our little Mac 7219 LED driver that I will talk a little bit more about in just a minute. But first, I wanna make sure that my 14 segment displays work. So I'm gonna set up one display and drive it with just the Arduino just to make sure we've got everything kind of going the way it should. Okay, I've got this first unit wired up and I just wrote a simple variation on the blink sketch that just cycles through each of the pins just to turn it on and off real quick. This is a common anode LED display. It's a little bit backwards from what I would normally work with, like a, a common cathode. So it, it, you gotta wrap your head around it, that on is off and off is on. Uh, but once you get past that, it, it's, it's fairly simple. It's just a matter of um, turning on the anode for the digit, uh, left or right, that you want to display, and then turning off the particular segments that you want to uh, turn on. Uh, or making them low and you know, vice versa. Anyway, uh, it's confusing, I know. So that's going on, but take a look at this wiring. This is an Arduino Uno, so I've got 20 pins to work with and I'm using, well, 17 of them. I have 18 plugged in, but one of them is a no connection. So there's gotta be a, a little bit more efficient way to do this because I still need to do the RTC and I still need to do the screen. Um, so I need to do a little bit of degree pokery, and that's where my LED driver IC comes in handy. So let's start looking at that. This is the Max 7219 LED driver chip. This is a little bit of a weird application for this. Normally what you would use this for is to drive like an eight by eight LED matrix or um, uh, up to eight seven segment displays. It's not really set up to drive 14 segment displays, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery and basically treat my displays as individual segments in an array. So basically redefine each digit as a group of LEDs in an array. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've gotta play around with the code on that, but. Let me get this thing wired up and play around with it and see if I can get this working just the way I want it to. Okay, so ran into a little bit of trouble when I had to wire this thing. You see, the 7219 is a common cathode LED driver and the 14 segment displays that I'm using are common anode. Uh, this is a common anode anode LED display. So that presented a little bit of a problem. Now, obviously I can just wire the whole thing backwards. Now that's fine. Now compounding that problem, when you wire something backwards like that, 
uh, everything shifts 90 degrees. Your rows become columns, your columns become rows. That can present itself as a problem. Uh, the library I was going to use, it's all set up for common cathode. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery in the code uh, to get it to work with this display, this setup. But in the meantime, you see here how the pinout of the 7219 is oriented. So you have your segments and you have your digits. And what we're gonna do is instead of wiring it like this, we're actually gonna wire it like this. So our segments become digits, our digits become segments, and everything should be okay at that point. Now, I really only need eight of the 14 segments, the normal uh, figure eight, seven segments, and then this one down the middle, this vertical piece down the middle to make letters like Bravo and Delta. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map the decimal point that I would normally have on a seven segment display. I'm gonna map that to this vertical piece. And so we'll have that working so instead of trying to map out every single segment as a combination of segment and digit, I'm just gonna do segments, eight segments on a digit and call it a day. So it would be a lot easier, a little more straightforward, much easier to code. So speaking of, let's get this thing wired together and put some code on it. Now through the magic of television, we have our fully wired demo. I only wired up two digits because it's really the same principle as you go and I kind of ran out of room on the breadboard uh, to do all the jumps over to the other four digits. So I'm not going to worry about that right now, but it's essentially the same thing. We've got each of the digit pins tied into their respective segment pins on the display unit and then each of the respective segment pins tied into the digit select on the display unit. So it's a little bit backwards. It's a little bit confusing in the wiring and remembering which one goes where, but it works. I will put a wiring diagram for this in the show notes down in the doobly-doo so you can check it out for yourself. Now let's put some demo code together. Now to handle all of the interaction with the 7219, I'm gonna be using the LED control library by Ebert Faley, but I am gonna be using like a very highly modified version of it because of everything kind of being worked backwards. So a couple of things we need to look at. Uh, first, foremost, the LED control function is really just setting up the LED control. Uh, it defines the pins, it defines uh, which 7219 you're talking to, however many uh, chips you're gonna have, because you can cascade these things in line, you can have so many set up if you wanna make more complicated displays. But we're only gonna have the one, so not a big deal right now. The other function we're gonna look at is the set column function, uh, which will literally control an entire column of LEDs at one time, if this were like an eight by eight matrix. But we're gonna treat this as sort of an eight by eight matrix because of it's, it's just easier to set it that way. So what we're gonna do is set an entire column as a digit and turn on all of the segments that we want to, all eight segments that we need. Uh, we can turn those on as we need them. So those are the two main new functions we're gonna look at in this particular project. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch. Okay, first you see where we have included the LED control library. We call it here and we define the LED control function uh, as specified in the library itself. So LC is LED control uh, and that calls the appropriate function as necessary. Now, the way I'm going to define what a particular number is, I'm going to actually kind of literally bit bang it out. So we've set an array of numbers, a 16 member array, uh, and that's going to contain the binary information for which segments are to be turned on and off depending on which number is to be displayed, zero through F. So if we call a particular number uh, during a count, it will just call that particular member of the array. And this is gonna be just a simple counting demonstration. Uh, so I'm going to have uh, two places set up. Those are gonna be indicated by the variables ones and twos, uh, just for right now. So here in the setup, we're just gonna have a simple uh, 7219 wake up call, tells it to uh, not shut down <laughs> and uh, set its own brightness. I, I've got it at the lowest setting for right now and I can always crank it back up and then it'll clear the display. 
Now in the loop section, first thing I wanna look at in the loop section is this while loop. So what it's doing is while the ones digit is less than or equal to 15, so as it's counting up zero through 15, it will display the appropriate number in that digit using the set column command with the variable of the numbers array based on whichever value is in the ones place. So if it's zero, it displays the first one. If it's one, it displays the second one on and on and up. That's why it says 15 and not 16, but even though there's 16 members. And then it'll wait for one second, and then it will add one to the value of the ones variable. So once we're out of the while loop, we're going to reset the value of the ones variable to back to zero, and then we're going to add one to the value of the twos variable. So zero becomes one, one becomes two, nine becomes a, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're doing right here is we're setting the value of the twos variable in the second digit. And really that's the simplicity of it. It's just a simple counter. It's gonna count up from zero to A in the ones column and then roll over and count from zero to A in the twos column. And then we've pretty much got our little mechanic that we're gonna use as a hexadecimal counter. So here is our simple little hexadecimal counter. It just rolls through each of the numbers and counts up to 255, which is FF in hexadecimal. And then after that, it, it kind of, breaks because I, I didn't really do anything after that. I just wanted to be able to demo it and show that it actually does work. So that is a common anode 14 segment display driven by a common cathode 7219 off of an Arduino. The cool thing is it only really uses three pins. So I've got a lot of room for expansion, which I am going to use in the rest of this project. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. In the meantime, connect with me on the social media at Airborne Surfer or The Airborne Surfer, depending on your platform of choice. Up here is a video that YouTube thinks you will probably enjoy. And if you wanna get the show notes for this particular project, including the code that I'm using, as well as the bill of materials, it's somewhere right around here. My name is Atari, and until next time, remember it's okay. It's just a prototype. Tally ho, y'all. <laughs>